Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar hosted by BBI International and our marquee publication, Ethanol Producer Magazine. My name is Tom Bryan, and I'll be your host and moderator this afternoon. I'm joined today by Alex Wayman and Adam Anderson, who oversee project development and product management, respectively, at ICM. Alex and Adam will together uh, present today's webinar titled Driving Process Efficiencies by Leveraging Specialty Equipment. I'll let the guys get started in just a second. Um, I think you'll find their presentation both informative and visually useful. It explains uh, and shows you how various equipment within ICM's APP system works and more specifically how it can work with your existing equipment, with your existing uh, dryer setups, your, your existing equipment setups and so forth without an inordinate amount of retrofitting. So it's very exciting. We're happy uh, that ICM is doing this third part of its webinar series on this subject. Um, ICM has worked in some videos today that I think really get at the heart of how this equipment operates and the results they're seeing at their facility and their clients' uh, projects as well. Again, this is the third part in a four-part series that ICM has done with us on the advanced processing package um, for our EPM audience. And uh, it's been very popular starting last fall and now extending this conversation out into 2022 as ICM and its partners make real headway with this uh, package. Um, and as of last week, I'll talk about this more in a minute, but as of last week, uh, three U.S. ethanol plants have either adopted or signed on to install this technology. Previous webinars that ICM has done with us have provided uh, insight on the APP system, the economics of the, uh, the industry, diversification opportunities with high protein feeds, and so forth. The team at ICM has touched on this system, uh, how it can be installed in a user-friendly way, how it can be done at a comparatively low cost, uh, how and why that can uh, happen, and uh, why it makes sense for producers economically. Uh, to consider this package. So today, with this third part, uh, the guys will get into the weeds a little bit more in terms of explaining the specialty equipment within the system, and then uh, sometime in the coming weeks, we'll also do a part four uh, series, which will be uh, lowering your carbon score while diversifying revenue. So offering kind of a fuller picture and completing that, uh, that full picture on the advanced processing package and what it means for the industry. A few housekeeping slides before we get started, um, or, or comments, I should say. This webinar is being recorded and will be available within 24 to 48 hours after we conclude today. Uh, consider that to be Monday, I suppose, uh, that we'll have it up and available to review. You can share it, watch it again, uh, review certain slides. If you're going to be reaching out to ICM for more details, that can be very helpful. Questions. Uh, as we move into the presentation. A lot of you will have questions. We encourage that. Use the webinar platform to enter in your questions. Uh, we'll be recording those, taking those down, and saving them for the end. Uh, so we'll hold all questions until Alex and Adam have concluded the presentation, and then we'll, we'll get right into that. Um, and with that, we have a message from our sponsor, ICM. ICM is proud to sponsor Looking to the Future Today, ICM's approach to efficient product diversification, a webinar series hosted by BBI International. Since 1995, ICM is focused on innovating and developing new technologies to support the production of renewable fuels and animal feed. More than 100 biorefineries worldwide have adopted its proprietary systems designed to help plants realize higher profits and better operational efficiencies at every step of the process. A global leader in the biofuels industry, ICM offers design, engineering, manufacturing, implementation, and plant support. To date, 
ICM has completed more than 5,500 projects across more than 300 locations, including over 30 plant retrofits. Want to know more? Visit icminc.com or any of these social media platforms. Great. You know, ICM has a very, very rich history of innovation. Uh, ICM has been a, a true pioneer in the ethanol industry, as most of our uh, participants know. And uh, that 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 innovation is continuing today. I wanted to mention as we get started that um, just yesterday, ICM announced that Cardinal Ethanol, a 120 million gallon ethanol plant in eastern Indiana, has signed an installation agreement for an ICM advanced processing package system, uh, which will be installed this coming summer. So that's very exciting news and makes what, what we're discussing here today all the more timely. With that, let's get started. I'll hand it over to Alex and Adam. Guys? Thank you, Tom. We appreciate the introduction. And yeah, here at ICM, we're pretty darn excited about our third APP sale and uh, securing those three over the last you know three months or so and happy to have Cardinal on board. Um, also wanted to give CBI and Ethanol Producers Magazine a special thank you to hosting this webinar. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Adam to just get things kicked off and moving forward. So Adam, what do you got for us today? Yeah, and I'd, I'd start by giving a, a nice thank you to Tom for that introduction as well and for the recap of the pre previous webinars we did, the one back in November, um, actually by myself, and then the one in December by Matt Durler and Dr. E. Mallory Wilkin. Um, I believe both of those are still available uh, through BBI on the website. For any new audience members today, highly encourage you to, to go back and, and listen to those recordings. You'll find good information from those webinars that feed into what we're going to present today. And so, building off Tom's recap, and just very quickly, because we've got a, just over 30 slides to get through today, I'll just start out by introducing the topic again. What we're talking about today is, is some of the specialty equipment that is included in the ICM APP package and kind of why we need it, how it works, the benefits it brings, and kind of some of the attributes that make it unique. And so to start that story, we got to start with the ethanol plant, again, talk about what we're doing with our APP system. And so the, the baseline ethanol plant, again, is somewhat limited by the three main products that we're able to produce right now in the industry. And again, we're at a, a position in a time right now where that dry distiller's grain pile, that's the, the best opportunity, probably the lowest risk opportunity to diversify these end use products, what the plant is selling. And so with our advanced processing package, we bring that capability of breaking the dry distiller's pile into new higher value feed products, most especially what this slide shows as the protobac, which is the yeast enriched 50% protein feed pile. And then, Along with that, based on the yield and the amount of protomax that you're producing, you have a capability to have a, a little bit smaller yield and a standard dry distiller's grain feed product that you're selling, um, or you can maximize the yield of your protomax and along with it produce what we call a sole brand feed product, with it, which is a high energy feed, uh, more specifically designed for the ruminants mainly. But again, that's all information that, that Dr. Wilkin and, and Matt Durler went into great detail in, in the December webinar. And as we get into the topic today, again, we're going to focus on some of the specialized equipment, and that equipment is all housed within these four main ICM technologies, these base technologies that we've been working on for over a decade um, that are that, that build and combine together to form our advanced processing package or our APP system. And kind of the, the highlighted thing I want to make as we get started is that as a plant looks to, to change and grow and, and produce these high-protein feed products, what we're doing mainly is we're taking that same kernel of corn and we're literally just breaking it apart into different clean process flows or clean piles, we like to call them. And to do that, when you have new process streams within your ethanol plant, you now need new equipment to address and best handle these process streams. So within our selected milling technology, within our fiber separation technology, within our feed optimization technology and our thin stillage solid separation system and, and the acronyms that ICM, of course, brings, brings along with those. Within each one of these, we have some new and exciting specialized equipment. And so we're going to go into those in, in more detail today. And we're going to do it similar to how I did it a couple months ago. We've got some process flow diagram slides. 
And we're going to start out with our baseline ethanol plant. We won't stay here very long, but again, to highlight to the audience, this process flow diagram goes from, from top to kind of top left to bottom right. But again, it highlights the end use processes and thankfully you can follow our cursor a little bit where we're going to start up here with the incoming corn. We're going to run through the ethanol process from, from top to right, <laughs> sorry, for in, the, in the top line from, from left to right. Then we'll drop down into the middle and we'll kind of go back from right to left. We'll, we'll do a separation and distillation so that the vapors and the liquids go left into the ethanol. Out of distillation, we'll drop down with the liquids or the whole stillage or the, the low fiber stillage is what it'll be within our APP system. From there, the decanters again break solids and liquids up and we'll get into the dryers, we'll get into the evaporators. Um, well, we won't really talk about the evaporators much, but within these new components, as we bring up the slide with our APP system, we're going to have some new and exciting specialty equipment to talk as we go here. So, Alex, introduce us there. Yeah, thanks for the recap. I appreciate that a lot, Adam. So, APP process is going to integrate IT and technology and specialty equipment in three key areas of the plant. And we're just going to kind of briefly walk over those as we're going to move into the actual specialty equipment within each one of these technologies. So we will be focusing, you know, left to right, like Adam did previously on the slide, is we're looking at milling. So we are going to do some upgrades to the milling operation of the plant. And as we move through, we're going to maintain the existing slurry and liquefaction. We will add the S and T, like the milling technology within liquefaction, to give us a chance to expose the starch and oils. And then also inside the pre-fermentation, we're going to be looking at FST. So FST is the fiber separation technology. So what we're looking at doing is getting a clean fiber separation. As you can tell from the cursor, is we see that clean fiber separation is going to take that fiber and not move it through fermentation. It's going to direct it towards the dryers. As we keep on moving into fermentation, we're not going to have any changes there or in distillation. We're going to jump back to post-distillation. And the technologies we're going to bring to the table for our plant are going to be our feed optimization technology, which is going to be looking at clean protein separation. As you can see with the arrows coming off here, the protein will be separated off and we'll head to the dryers. The next technology we'll be looking at in post distillation is going to be TS4, our thin stillage separation technology. And we're looking at getting a clean yeast and risk protein separation with this technology. That as well is going to be a clean pile going back to the dryers. Other piles that we'll be looking at are still going to be the standard distiller corn oil, as well as the solubles coming out of evaporation. So a key factor here as we're looking at this process flow diagram overall holistically is that we're looking at clean piles. You know, to drive the most diversified revenue to a plant, we need to be able to maximize those clean piles and get the best purity of those clean piles. Yep. So where we'd like to go next is just kind of briefly discuss the dry milling and the wet milling as a part of the APP process. Yeah, and as we move forward, these the technologies and the changes will get highlighted, hopefully allowing you to follow along a little better. Um, so, yeah, Adam, you're right. And we'll, we'll get to the equipment as we keep on moving along here. But on a high level, we're just going to go ahead and have another block flow diagram, process flow diagram on the board. And as you notice, we have dry milling and then wet milling being SMT highlighted in green blocks. And so we're going to be leveraging special equipment in both of these areas to be able to drive efficiency separations downstream, as well as proper fractionation of the feedstock and, and mash for efficient uh, conversion and recovery. Correct. Yeah, and I think one of the main things we'll focus here on the front end is, is we're going to use the term particle size a lot and particle separation as well. So let's get into that. That is a great lead, Adam. <laughs> I like that. So, yeah. As you guys can see on the screen that we have in front of us here is we have two piles. We're looking at a fine grind, which would be more of a standard grind profile at a typical plant without APP. And then on the left, you're looking at a right side grind that you would actually see with a plant that has APP. So what, what are we seeing the difference here, Adam? Well, I think uh, a main thing I like to look at when I look at these pictures is the right size grind picture on the left. You can actually visually see some of the fiber components. Yep. And that fiber being that's the pericarp or that outer layer of the corn kernel. If you want to get more specific for folks with a real life example, it's the, the portion of the kernel that gets stuck in your teeth when you're eating popcorn. I think everyone's experienced the frustration of that. But in that left hand picture, you can literally see that fiber, the fiber particles. And especially if you, if you come and tour our element facility and you, you pull the, the kind of that grind profile examples out, you can, you can see that fiber very well. And that fiber is that main particle size that we're focused on. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that explanation, Adam. 
So in the dry milling side, like we talked about, we have dry milling and wet milling. On dry milling, we would be looking at replacing hammer mills with new milling equipment. Right. This new milling equipment is used in several different industries. It just kind of has an ICM innovative twist on it, right? I mean, that's what right. we like to do is we take equipment, we put an innovative twist on it and make it work the way that we need to make it work to give us the process efficiencies we need. Yep. The other part in wet milling, we had already kind of hit on this, but we will be looking at deploying and installing the S&P system within liquefaction for uh, right particle size separation. Correct. Yeah, so moving on out of the dry mills, we obviously are still pre-fermentation. And now let's, let's get into some of the most specific equipment that both S&P and FST utilize. And I think we're going to get into some pretty good detail here on our, our multi-zone screen apparatus or MPSAs. And then after that, we'll get into the rotary press machine. Um, so let's go ahead and move to the next screen. And Absolutely. So what we have on the screen here is ICM's patent MZSA. And like Adam had said, you know, we, we like acronyms, but we're, we're, it's the multi-zone screening apparatus is what it's called. We're going to call it MZSA to save time, uh, you know, on this deal. <laughs> <laughs> so the MZSA is actually utilized in both the SMT technology and the FST technology. And the MZSAs are the same make and model between both technologies as well, which is awesome because it allows plants flexibility to share spare parts between the units. So you will have both of these as part of the APP process, but it's nice to know that, hey, I can use a bearing here, or I can use a paddle bar here, you know, change yep. parts back and forth. And then also in terms of being operator and user friendly, the, the machine that runs on the SMT passes is the same as the FST passes, mm -hmm. and so the operators maintain their familiarity and they run based on the same principles. Absolutely, they do. So those principles, just to kind of dive into that a little bit. So the basics of this is the internal to this machine, we have mash coming into the machine being fed from a pump, and you have paddle bars that are pushing that mash up against the screen, internal screen. The liquids and fine solids, which would be your starch, fat, and proteins, passes through the round hole screens, which we'll get into in just a second here. And then also the dewatered solids that are retained within the screen are going to uh, be retained, and we're looking for right size particle right there. I mean, that's really what we're looking at here. So within the SMP system for this unit, we'd be looking at combining those core solids and the liquids back together. But in the FST, we want to make sure that we're moving those apart. We want to retain the core solids away from the liquids because the liquids are going to go where, Adam? Uh, the liquids are going to go to fermentation. Fermentation. And then the solids, the coarse fiber solids, are going to be going to our rotary press, which we'll get into in just a second. So I just want to go over a couple of highlight things that we have on this MPSA. It just makes it unique in itself. You know, MDSAs are something that ICANN has been using for, you know, a long time. But some of the changes we had over the last three years is that we went direct drive, which is decreasing stress on our rotating elements of the MDSA. We're bidirectional. So that means we can have increased life on the wear parts. You can actually rotate, move it forwards and backwards like you do on your hammer mills today type deal. Okay. Uh, we've got oil bath bearings, which is decreasing maintenance and downtime. And we got our round hole screens and uh, patent pending paddle bars and flingers. So I, I think we should start jumping to the next slide and check that out. What do you think, Adam? Well, videos are worth uh, more than a thousand words. So yeah, let's go ahead and get a video running. And I think a key thing with the MZSA is again, we're, we're trying to do, or what we're doing with them is we're doing a dewatering, but again, we're doing that particle size separation all throughout SMT and FST. Again, maintaining the, fi the, the, the particle size of the fiber, and then doing a good cleaning and washing of it as well. And so as you're doing that, these MZSAs being the, the piece of equipment that's doing the separation, you want them to be to, to run very, very smooth. And you want to make use of the entire, you know, uh, inner dimensions, I would say, of the MZSA. And so this video is showing you that process stream, that, that smallest particles in that liquid, as it's being separated from the solids that would be inside of the screen, and as you're looking at this through the open doors of our MZSA, I want you to focus on how smooth that process flow is as it comes through the screen. Um, as the screens get dirty or the holes start to plug or with different technology, different design screens, this is actually a much more violent um, action. And as you get towards the back of the machine, you start to see the solids gum up and chunk up. And um, we've actually got some visuals of that as well from some of our earliest versions of these types yeah. of machines. But this video, I love how it shows that that good smooth separation, good, you know, kind of liquid yeah. flow through the screen. Absolutely. And so just to kind of tee up off of that, I appreciate that, Adam. You know, what, what we're equipping the MZSA with is the round hole screens and upgraded paddle bars. 
it's not something you can see from this video, but you can see, you know, from left to right as this video is panning across, you're looking at the inlet to the discharge of the MZSA. And so what we're provided with these round hole screens is you've got maximum open surface area, which has increased our throughput capability of this unit. So you're talking about less units to do the same amount of work. We have precise opening size on our screen, allowing right particle size retention. So as you notice in this video, do you see any solids extruding out of the screen? Well, we don't, no. And I, I wanted to ask you too, so when you talk about a precise opening size, does that mean there's different size screens or what, how, how does that work out? No, absolutely, that's a great question. So, you know, we'll get a picture on the next slide of the actual interior of the screen and we'll be looking at the round holes, but we do have different size screens to av available to customers because when you're in SMT, we might be looking at different retention of particles that we would in FSP. So we have several different sizes that are designed for retention of certain particle sizes. And as we develop, you know, the project at a plant, we, we determine what that needs to be. Yeah, so as you step through SMT and then the, the couple stages of FST, you're dealing with different process flows, mm -hmm. right? So you need different screens as you progress through them. Absolutely, absolutely. And then one other key factor that, you know, these round hole screens and the paddle bar innovations that we've, had, that we've done is, you know, we're giving the plant the ability to operate this machine with a VSD. So they can slow and speed up this machine for control separation based off their flow rate. Yep. It, it, it's full control over the machine. It, it's awesome. So... Adam, I wanted to ask you, you know, what, what, what's your plans to expect on durability of this MVSA? Yeah, and let's, let's go to the next slide, which kind of shows you uh, in that internal picture that you mentioned on the screen. And just a, a little brief history, and I think our next slide even shows a picture of, of our previous design screens that we were using. But as we started out with our first paddle screens, uh, mainly within the SMT system, we had what were called wedge wire screens or more of a horizontal opening screen. And uh, those things worked. They did the job. We were dewatering the, the product flow before we were going to the disc mills. Uh, but we did find some limitations in terms of wear life to where those wedge wire screens um, would be, their service life would be used up in, you know, a couple of weeks sometimes if the, the plant was being aggressive with them. It just depended on feedstock aggressiveness. Yeah, yeah. They, mm -hmm. and they could extend out to two or three months and, and work just fine. Um, but we did still, you know, get some customer input that said they'd like them to go longer if we could. And that helped lead to the innovation, which is this round hole screen design that we've come up with working with our, part, our partner, Fournier. And so the, the screens that you're seeing on the picture right now, obviously the one on the left is, is new, and the one on the right is the wear that has been seen over a full year of service life. And you can see that the, the, the main integrity of that whole size, again, which is controlling that particle type separation, has been maintained. So there's, there's some wear from, from top to bottom. There's some wear from bottom to top, again, speaking to our ability to be bi-directional yeah, with the MZSAs now. And so we're able to, to switch and, and, you know, move the screens around within the machine to help extend the service life. But again, getting, you know, one year out of one set of screens and, you know, having this visual showing you can go even longer, um, that's pretty revolutionary compared to where we were, you know, five, six, or even 10 years ago. Um, with what we had in terms of the previous screen design. Absolutely. I, I, I agree with you, Adam. And, you know, we've had some partners out there in plants that have been running these screens over a year. You know, as long as you're going to go ahead and do the bi-directional, you know, change on them and wear them evenly, you can get a lot of life out of these guys. Yeah, and that's what customers want. They just want that capability and that control um, to get the most out of them that they can. And, and this is the, I think, what's up now. Yeah, this slide, this, this gives the visuals of what I was talking about next. So the the picture on the left is, again, the, the ICM patented round hole screens, and you can kind of get a picture here as well of how it's a very smooth inner dimension, um, smooth inner wall of the screens. And again, the screens are a quarter inch thick, so that also speaks to their ability and, and longevity. But that smooth wall is also very critical because what that allows is for that smooth product flow that we were showing in that video. Um, the screens on the right, the slotted screens, again, they can do the separation. And, and there's some use for them. But with their design and with those horizontal openings, as the bar is, is pushing that product up against them, uh, there is opportunity for additional vibration and just harmonics um, because you're, you're essentially pushing the product over a washboard. And that's just a, a very good and easy visual. If you're, if you're pushing anything over a smooth surface, it's pretty smooth. If it goes over a washboard, there's obviously some, some vibration and some 
greater agitation that comes with that. Absolutely, Adam. So, I mean, you kind of hit it on the head, and just to, just to put it out there, you know, we did utilize these web fire screens, slotted screens in the past within our SMT and FST technologies, but we observed some key inefficiencies. And, you know, you, you talk about that friction. So, we're talking about rotational friction, and that's really direct impingement of the paddle bar against each one of those wedge wires as it passes over it. And so what we saw from that is, you know, we saw the decreased separation efficiency. You know, we start folding over the wedge wires and then all of a sudden your open area is basically cut off or cut in half. Uh, we also saw fiber particle size reduction, which we're wanting to keep the particle size maintained right. And then wedge wire failure too. So as you can see on the right, you know, the internal of the screen, there's no, there's no structure internally to really keep this from flexing inwards. And so when you have that, that rotational friction, what it's going to do is allow it to flex inwards and you have the potential of actually damaging the screen and having failures, which we saw. Um, you know, and then when you have that external structural cage, you also, you can kind of see it through, you know, through that wedge wire right there, but that structural cage acts as a holdup, a place for things to build up as it's actually coming out and dewatering. So what we took a look at on the left when we went to our round hole screens is we have a solid stainless steel that provides rigid and non-flexing screen. So uh, that was one key factor we were looking at. We also, you said that smooth interface. So with a smooth interface, we're providing minimal rotational friction between the paddle bars and the screen. And then we don't have any external cage required. Um, when, you're, when you're solid stainless steel, you just don't need it, so we don't have that buildup, right? So you got anything else that we want to touch on while we're here? No, I think that covers it pretty well. And I mean, any points that we did miss, we're happy to to call out an individual customer conversation. Absolutely. Um, again, just highlight that, I mean, Fournier has been a great partner as we've, as we've uh, worked with these screens. And I want to actually get into our next piece of equipment because I'm really excited about it as well because it's also with our, with our vendor partner, Fournier, our exclusive vendor partner. And I think this rotary press is one of the more exciting things to show on a tour and it's one of the more exciting things to talk to our customers about because it's a very good example of ICM innovation. And as I mentioned at the start of the webinar, as, as plants are adopting these new technologies, they're seeing new process flows. And so in that process flow diagram, we talked about how the, that clean fiber is bypassing fermentation, bypassing distillation, and it's, it's going to the back end of the plant, either to the wet pad or to the dryer. And so it's, a, it's kind of a similar process flow, process flow diagram wise, to what the whole silage would be, mm -hmm. except you know, no longer is it whole stillage. We've got a video here a little bit where we'll look at what that fiber stream looks like, and it's it's way different than thin still or way way different than whole stillage, and so it needs to be dewatered differently than how thin stillage. Yeah, or whole it, almost, stillage it, would almost, be it almost sounds like an abrasive nature fiber does, right? And, oh, very much. So. And you know, when we were doing our initial testing, you know, when we were developing FST, we did take a look at decanters. But decanter is just more best suited to be able to get the fiber solids that, that we're wanting to attain, right? And actually the deep water and the clinging of that fiber. Exactly. And so to kind of, you know, springboard us into the next slide, let's just kind of take a look at some of the benefits that, you know, this rotary press has brought to, one, the FST, but also the industry, honestly, too. Yeah, yeah. And again, due to that nature of that, that process, that, that fiber and water process stream heading to a, a final piece of equipment before the dryers or the wet pad, it's got a pretty clean liquid to it, and it's got that, that separated kind of high particle size fiber, and we want to be able to separate that water and the fiber very efficiently. And so what, what I like this diagram showing is it, it shows, well, it doesn't give a good example of, of what we want to talk about in terms of a low RPM application or the low horsepower application, but it does give a good visual of, of the maintenance capabilities we have, pulling a, a Cambridge or a, you know, a, a section out, and putting in a dummy shaft, and allowing it to continue to operate. Um, but overall, with the, with the press, Alex, let me give us a couple of just those high-level uh, benefits that it's bringing. Uh, honestly, I think one of the coolest things about the press is that it's going to wash and then it's going to dewater the fiber up to 46% solids. So that fiber that you used to move to your guys' decanners, you know, at plants, it normally comes out in the mid, you know, 30s, maybe, maybe upper 30s for some plants. But we are taking that third of that pile, pushing it to the press after we separated it out pre-fermentation, and then we're squeezing it to a 46% solid. So in retrospect, what you see there is that you're going to see a natural gas reduction at your dryers. That's one benefit. Let's say if you are making, you know, a wet feed to your pad, you can make a non-thermal modified feed without taking it to a dryer. 
Correct. And that's yeah. exactly what Element is doing. Absolutely. So that's one of the biggest highlights I, I love about this machine. And then the next one, is, it's on the screen, is, you know, we're using anywhere from 40 to 80 horsepower on the rotary press. Compared to what is the centerpiece use? Oh, I, I would say anywhere from 150 to 250 total horsepower on, on a decanter or centerpiece. So, you know, we're looking at incremental to what that is to be able to do more throughput capability of fiber on this rotary press. Yeah, and again, that's that's nothing negative about centrifuges because we're going to be talking about them later. Oh, we need them still too. Yes, yes. but again, yeah. this this fiber process stream, clean water, easily well, not easily, but you know, those larger clean particle fiber fiber particles that we want to separate out. It's just it's a different process stream than what whole spillage is. Yeah, and the thing about ICM is whenever we come into a new technology that we're developing, you know, we keep on innovating and innovating, but one thing that's the top of our heads is, you know, we're looking at OPEX, right? And if we can decrease the horsepower and get better output out of it, by all means, we're going to be shooting for that. So the other part of this deal, too, is we're looking at a low rotational speed. So you're looking at a max 5.5 RPM rotation to be able to create a 46% solid. So a low RPM, you know, that that's awesome just for the sheer fact that it's going to increase the amount you know of time that you're going to or, or increase when we're going to actually have to do the, the maintenance on this machine I and mean, we're seeing anywhere from one to two years on wear parts just because of the low rpm operation that we have correct i think it's also critical to point out that within the rotary press we also have washing capabilities don't we absolutely we do yes and so it's actually a phase within our fst to where we actually do a, a third washing of that fiber to make sure that we're getting all the starches all the oils and all the protein back to where it needs to be in fermentation. So it's a dual effect piece of equipment and it's an awesome, awesome, awesome addition to the SSP. Okay, and then real quick before we go to the next video, uh, what about capacity for these presses? How does that compare to, to a centrifuge? So, you know, comparing to a centrifuge, you know, initial testing when we were looking at using uh, decanters for the fiber, we were looking at Four rotary press channels equated to about two decanters on a throughput basis for the fiber process stream. And then the other part of this too is that this design is modular. As you can see on the screen, you can add channels to this up to 14 channels. So as you increase plant rates, it's just adding another cassette, which is two channels to the press. Yeah. So that 80 horsepower could actually compare to could be compared up to like maybe four centrifuges. Yeah. So 150 to 200 each. Absolutely. So that's, that's very significant gain efficiency in terms of just electrical load, which also translates into CI score, which we'll talk about in the next webinar. Not us, thankfully. Chuck <laughs> Allen will get to do that. But all right, let's let's show a next video. And again, I think this video's been around a little while, and this is a a good. Well, we did a jump ahead. I like that too. Yeah. Um, I <laughs> no, that's that's fine. That's fine. Uh, this is actually a video I got to show in my previous webinar, and actually it's a video we've been showing for several years. But it gives a great example of how there's a process stream, which was labeled slurry there, that would be the firm feed in a uh, existing ethanol plant. And then with our APP system and with FST, we've now got a, this middle picture, this middle uh, process flow that's going to be the new flow going through the beer mash exchanger into fermentation through the firm coolers. You know, it's being pumped, it's being heated and cooled. And those, those two particle streams, the left and the middle, are just a really good comparison for how the, the process flow changes and is different with the APP system. And then on the far right, that was that, that fiber process stream I was talking about that's being sent to the press. And again, you can just picture how different that is compared to whole spillage. A standard whole spillage, it would be going and needing to be dewatered before a wet pad or a dryer. Again, dewatering that fiber process stream is way different and Again, the rotary press, the best way to do it. Absolutely. I fully agree with you, Adam. And, you know, we also talk about, you know, specialist equipment, but they bring other process efficiencies other than just bringing separation efficiency, too. You know, when you remove that fiber from fermentation and also the beer column, you're looking at better heat transfer, more volume that can be pumped into your fermentation, some, some more throughput. There's a lot of good benefits that come with just removing that fiber from fermentation and beer column. Yep. All right. Let's wrap up this discussion on the rotary press with one more video and one more visual here on the left. So what you're looking on the left is a couple of what we call Hershey Kiss piles of the clean fiber. Uh, so that's, again, the fiber without any syrup or anything added onto it. That's what it looks like. And then the video on the right, this is actually a, a sample I grabbed, I think, two days ago. or No, it was last week. It was last week over at yeah. Element where we went to the back of the press. Um, we, we grabbed some of the fiber off of it. And we gave it a minute or two to cool, so I went for my hands put it on a green shovel and 
Uh, this is one of the best things I like to show on the Element Tour is you, you get this new fiber stream that's dewatered, ready to go to the wet pad or for some, some customers, maybe to the dryer. But as you put it in your hand and you squeeze it, there's no moisture that comes out of it. And there's no stickiness to it, so you're not carrying sugars through. Um, I know you like like it better if you actually put it in your hand and blow oh, it. Oh, yeah. You absolutely <laughs> – I do that with almost every customer we take on a tour. You just blow it out of your hand. It's just – it's amazing the consistency and the dryness of that product. Yeah, I just – I didn't want to get my face into the video, so <laughs> I just used my hand. But, again, a really good visual of – of that fiber stream, which again is now going to the dryer at the 46% solids, or going to the wet pad as a non-thermal, yeah. you know, feed ingredient that you can combine. And, and I don't, I don't think there's any better picture than you know that video right there, the angle of pose with those piles to show the dryness of it. And so that dryness equates to natural gas reduction. You know, when you're taking this product to your dryer, either if you're going to combine it or separate it and keep this clean piles, that is definitely a huge, huge efficiency gain for the plant. Well, yeah. Adam, Great. what do you think about jumping into, you know, post-distillation and looking Let's at the it. technologies and equipment there? Let's do it. So I think we got a process flow diagram again that reminds the audience where we're going. So, again, we're out of FST. Clean fiber stream is, is passed on to the dryer, and now those concentrated uh, starch, fat, oil, all that stuff went into fermentation and into, into distillation. And so now we're coming out of distillation with a new process stream and no longer a standard whole spillage. It's now a low-fiber whole spillage or a low-fiber spillage. Going into FOT, and again, on the back end with FOT and CS4, we're still focused on doing separation, but we've shifted. On the front end, we use that particle size separation technology. On the back end, we're going to do density separation. And again, that speaks again to the difference in the process flows. So let's go ahead and pull up the next slide. And within our FOT system, we're going to be using, I'm going to name our next strategic vendor partner here. We're going to be using Flawig centrifuges. And within the FOT system, we're using standard decanters, and we're going to just modify them. And so we modify the internals, we modify the drive, and we allow these decanters. So a plant that has existing Flotwig machines will be able to modify their machines and give their machines more, more uh, capacity and more capability in terms of being able to drive to higher solids. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing within the FOT system. And then we're also doing a, a, a washing of that, of that uh, the solids to, again, give us the, the process efficiencies and gains that come along with that. Yeah, I mean, at a high level, the feed optimization technology, you know, we're keying on feed uh, protein, protein purity, you know, take dryness also, and then the oil potential we'll get to in just a little while, right? Correct. Yeah, That's and to awesome. do that, again, let's get some visuals of what the internals of the machines can look like. Yeah, absolutely. So, Adam, you know, as we're looking at the screen here, you know, this has kind of been an evolution over the last 20 years. You know, our, our value partner, Flotwig, you know, the industry started out with the original scroll and then, you know, started to develop and moved into the modified scroll, which, you know, several plants today are actually operating with. And now the most recent evolution that we have deployed within the FOT system is the exclusive FOT scroll. Now, the FOT scroll is going to bring capabilities of us higher throughput, like you were talking about, higher take solids, and lower centrate solids. So, you know, by, by getting those higher, higher throughput, what, what, are we, what are we doing? We're decreasing the equipment count, right? Correct. I mean, we're looking for efficiencies, and that's one way to do it is by getting higher throughput to give us the ability to, you know, cleanse that protein, get higher purity, drive the oil potential. So yep. it's good with, stuff. The, with the higher cake solids, let's go to the next slide and let's kind of give a picture and hopefully our customers that are familiar with what wet cake typically looks like. We've actually got a video here of this 40 to 42 percent solids cake. Again, this is cake coming off of a centerpiece, coming off of a decanter. So this would be feeding a dryer or again could be going through the wet pad. but Typically, when you're at one of the, the ethanol plants and you're out looking at their centrifuges and you're potentially pulling a sample of wet cake, it's kind of uncommon, but it does happen. Um, it does not look like this. It's not granular. It does not break apart in your hand. It's, it's, it's more kind of gooey, and it's, um, it's just a different process stream. And, again, that just speaks to it having more water content. Mm -hmm. And so more water content, if you're wanting to dry down to that 10 or 12% solids that a standard PDG is going to be, or in this case, we're, we're going to a protein product and we're still going to get down into that 10% moisture or better range. Um, you know, the amount of water that's in the cake feeding the dryer speaks to the amount of natural gas or BTUs required to dry the, the product down to your target moisture. Yeah, and so we'll, we'll get those higher cake solids with modifications that have been made to the scroll. 
and they enable us to get there with the, the same G-force that, you know, the, the current VCAN or the customer's still already has. It's just, you know, putting that exclusive FOC scroll in is going to give us this opportunity. Yep. And I think it is worth mentioning, too, just for the audience, so we, we know and understand there is, you know, a good percentage of the industry that does not have existing plot weak centrifuges, um, some other technology. With the APP system, to answer a question of whether or not we can use other technology, we, we, we can't and we really don't want to. The Flawig machines are the, the machines that do exactly what we want. So if the plant does have a different standard decanter, we'd be changing those out with uh, with the Flawig centrifuges. And that's, you know, not that adds a little bit of CapEx. But what we are finding out from a lot of our customers is that those, those machines are, are either nearing the end of their service life or they've become you know, somewhat of a, a high maintenance item. And so the timing is actually pretty good for these new Flatwood machines to be placed into one of those plants to be able to do what it needs to be yeah. within the APC. I mean, let's put them in, let's, let's decrease the equipment count. So we, we just touched on oil pinches. So the right picture up there is a centrate that's actually coming off of the decanter with the SOT exclusive scroll. And so what we're showing at the top there is the phase oil level that is showing oil potential that would be lost you know, out the back end with, yep. the, with the feed. So there is oil potential here for plants as well as a part of the FOT system. And I know that we've been out on the road, you know, presenting this to people. And I think a lot of people have been able to kind of see what the opportunity is there. Yeah, yeah. So that spin down does do a really good job of, of showing a customer that, that that top layer of oil would be gone. It would be either in the dryer or it would be on the wet pad, if not for the FOT system. All right. Well, let's, let's move on to our next system and get into some more specialty equipment on the uh, post-distillation side. Yep, so as we move into the TS4 system, obviously it's the next step down. So our, our protein has been separated out through OT, and now we've got a, a thin stillage stream. We're going to flow that again to another set of the Flotwig machines. They're Flotwig centrifuges, but these are actually a different design. They're called a steady canter. And let's go ahead and pull up the next screen to give a visual of the, the steady canters. So this is one of our TS4 installations, and you can see a nice lineup of, of slot with steady canters. And the steady canters, again, are a, a piece of equipment that have been around for a little while, but traditionally they've been used in other industries. So with our partner Flotwig, we identified an opportunity for a good fit in terms of doing this spin down and this density separation within the thin stillage. Um, so yeah, Alex, go ahead. And again, this is another good visual of one yeah, of our installs. Absolutely. So th this is an installation of four steady canners uh, at a plant. I believe it's you know five, six years ago when we seven years ago when we started installing TS4. But you know, there's opportunity at plants, especially you know we talked about the the FOT and, and being able to decrease units. You know, we we've looked and done FELs and you know have projects in front of us to where we can even fit these in on an energy center deck as well. So really, it's just optimal location when we step into the plants. But operations uh, of these uh, steady canners are going to be very similar, you know, to Flawwood D canners. You're going to have, you know, the local PLC HMI screen there that's going to allow you to be, you know, fully automated and adjustable at the unit itself, which is huge because, you know, you're talking about friendly operations. Well, if a plant already is used to operating one piece of equipment, it's pretty handy to be able to jump into the next and understand it and run with it pretty quick. Yep, and as we're focusing on doing this separation of the thin stillage and those specifically the, the suspended solids, um, there's a pretty, pre a pretty key component within those suspended solids that we need for our APP system and for the Protomax feed product, correct? Absolutely. Let's, let's pull up the next video and let's give a visual of the cake solids that come off of the steady canter. And again, this is a video that this one's been around for a couple of years now too, and I think it's a little glitchy for you this feed. But it, it's good enough to give you a picture of how kind of a, a soft serve ice cream or a I call it butter. I call it peanut. I call it peanut butter. But you know, it's yep. what gives the sizzle to our protein pile, right? And, and why is that, Alex? Well, well it's it? because of the yeast. It's the amino acid profile that this can bring an uplift to that. You know, valuable lysine percentage. You know, you have on the protein. I think a lot of our audience has probably heard about that in the last webinar we had. Yep. And, and so, you know, that that's what's bringing that sizzle to that protein pile. Correct. Yeah, and so along with that, this is a new process stream going into the ethanol plant. So you also want some innovative and technology being able to handle the solids. And so we bring that along as well. But again, those steady canner machines, perfectly suited to do this density separation of the thin spillage that's coming along with the ABP system to allow us to get that concentrated, high protein, high yeast concentrated feed mixed back in with the other separated protein pile 
to give us the ProtoMax B product. Absolutely. So I, I peeled ahead of you here, Adam, and basically jumped to the next slide. But this is just a representation of, you know, the yeast body, the suspended solid. On the left is what thin stillage at a standard plant would be. And then the recovery of those solids with a steady canner with the TS4 technology installed on the right. So we're, we're looking at cutting the suspended solids that are going to evaporation by 50% or more. And you know, what, what is that? I, I guess what we like to say is TS4 helps EVAPs and dryers do what they do best. So can you explain to us that and what EVAPs do best and what dryers do best and how this works, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is something that, that just kind of came to our mind as we were developing the TS4 technology, but within the names of evaporators and within the name of dryers, it's such a really good description of what they're doing. And they're both doing separations in and of themselves. But evaporators by design do a really good job of evaporating water out of a liquid stream. And so they're, they don't want solids there. They just want to be able to evaporate water out of a liquid. And dryers by design do a really good job of drying water out of a solid. And so with TS4, what we're doing is we're, is we're separating out those suspended solids so that the evaporators get that process stream with less solids. So it's a cleaner liquid to evaporate water out of. And those solids in turn, are, are sent to the dryers where the dryer can dry the water out of the solid and do it much more efficiently and just better than the solids would be handled within the evaporator. Stream. And I mean, the result of that, so we keep on talking about reduction in natural gas, which is a reduction in carbon. When you take those solids out of evaporation, we have the opportunity now to drive those surf solids out of evaporation up to a 50% or more. Correct. And, and so that's another one of those unique and new process flows, process streams that's going to come with the APP system. It's a new syrup yep. that has higher solids that, again, gives you that capability to, to combine that syrup back with a standard dry distiller spring product, you know, standard protein and other specs, pro fat specs that you want to hit, or to that sole brand product where it can, it can mate and combine perfectly with that sole brand fiber and syrup type product. Yeah, and so when we're taking a 50% solids to the dryers that could be mixed with the fiber and, you know, some of the protein to make, you know, a DDG, or we can make the sole brand product, you know, which is fiber and syrup, you know, that syrup normally was what, low to mid 30% solids yeah, coming mid, off mid or upper 30, evaporation. Yeah. Now we're at 50%. That's a huge hydraulic fluid removed from the dryers, giving us a whole lot of benefit and process efficiencies, lower carbon. You know, we keep on going on and on OPEX, you know, all the way down the list. Yeah. All right, we got one more piece of equipment to talk about. We're coming up on 50 minutes total here, so let's let's start to wrap this up. But we can't wrap it up without talking about one more specialty piece of equipment within the ICM APP design, and that is the ICM dryer system. And again, we've, we've talked about the other technologies all being relatively new within the last 10 years or so. The ICM dryer system obviously is not new. Uh, it's been around since the mid-90s when, when David Dennis Vandergren brought it into the industry, and it's it revolutionized the industry in a lot of ways. And in fact, when I started with ICM back in 2004, I was a, a project manager within what was called the dryer team and then became the, the energy team. But we focused on the ICM dryers. And I can remember my first few interactions with the ICM dryer system and my first few startups with the ICM dryer system. I was just amazed with the amount of controls uh, that the dryer system had in terms of feed rate, in terms of airflow, in terms of temperature control, in terms of negativity all of those things, and, um, you know, got into my first few startups and found out all those controls were kind of out the window because everybody was running their plant to the, the hardest and highest maximum uh, production rate possible, and so the dryers were just maxed out, and it's been really exciting to see that kind of come back into the fold, all those controls I just mentioned, as we're talking about these high-value feed products, these high-protein feed products that need to be dried gently, that need to have a a certain controlled temperature, a certain controlled airflow, a retention time within the dryer, all of those things and all of those controls we have within our dryer system. And it's been really exciting for me to see. And, and knowing that we've now been doing this for over two years over here at Element, it's just, it's, it's proof and it's great. It's been really fun to see. Yeah, I mean, that, that goes hand in hand too with drying the fiber and syrup. That's sole brand product, right? The, the brand of solubles, you know, right. as, as, as Matt and Mallory would probably tell me, you shouldn't say the other brand of solubles, the sole brand product. <laughs> yeah. And, that, know, and so we, we can do both products. We can, you know, look at taking existing dryers and we, we can split those dryers, you know, and, and drive both products as needed for the customers. You know, Correct. the rotary dryer brings so many elements as Adam was, as Adam was talking about. To the table to allow us to be able to draw dry those clean piles as needed for a plant to drive the highest diversified revenue stream to the plant correct and that 
I think that's a, a good place to end as we look to, to kind of summarize up what we've gone over today and with the APP system um, in as a whole. So in terms of it being an integrated technology, the specialty equipment we talked about today all plays key roles within that. So again, we're not trying to bolt on a, a kind of a big massive piece of, of technology on the back end of the plant only. We want to fully integrate into the plant and our specialized equipment it gives us the best opportunity to do that. And along with that, it's, it's user friendly and it's efficient and it gives our, our customers the ability for consistent protein production um, you know, through each piece of equipment, through the dryers on the back end, minimum upset, um, you know, maximum opportunity to consistently produce the protein. And then the other efficiencies that come along with that, we've only hinted at it today and in the previous webinars, um, Chuck Allop, thankfully, will, will go into better detail about that in the next webinar. So I greatly encourage people to, to tune in for that. And again, all of this is driving into the, the opportunity for diversified revenue streams. Um, in the last six months, our, our industry has been very healthy. It's done really well. So the, the pain hasn't been there like it was maybe the prior two, three, four, five years even for, for those low margin windows that we've seen within the industry, that, that need for diversified revenue. But I think coming off of these really good times, hopefully some customers are in a position to, to take this leap and to, and to really invest in their future with the diversified revenue streams. And again, ICM's focus is to do it in the most efficient, the most uh, user-friendly, and again, the lowest ongoing OPEX manner, which can drive into that highest market-driven EBITDA uplift opportunity. And that's really our system kind of summarized, and I hopefully uh, the, the specialized equipment that we're able to speak to today kind of gives a better visual and a better example of how we're doing it. Absolutely, Adam. I think you had it right on the head, right, never right on the head. So you've agreed, it, you've agreed with me this whole time, now. I know. That's I'm good. I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> so yeah, I think with that, let's uh, let's get Tom back involved here and see if we we've, we've got some questions or or other things we can discuss. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, wonderful presentation. You did a great job. Um, I think that the insight you're providing uh, is. is really helping people understand uh, what is in the advanced processing package. Um, and we built this up over time with the, the first webinar, then the second talking about the end product and now really diving into the equipment. So excellent job. We've got some questions coming in. I wanna thank Alex and Adam again for, for the presentation and we will uh, move right into some questions here. Um, first off, I think what I'll do is um, I've got a couple that are pair of questions that are kind of related from two different people. Uh, first person asks, you know, how many, how does a, how does a producer go about starting to evaluate how many new additions or new pieces of equipment would be needed for an APP system um, based on what they already have? And then another, this is kind of a, maybe a tough two part question, but the other person asks, uh, what the typical ROI is on each of the new process streams. Uh, that's kind of related. I know in a previous webinar we talked about you guys got into ROI, um, but maybe start with the the first one, addressing, starting to address how many pieces of equipment and and, and the need the needs that uh, that a producer would have. Where do you start? No, absolutely, Tom. So this is Alex, and I'll go ahead and take this this question on. Um, actually, Adam just nudged me. <laughs> so what what we do within uh, ICM is we have what we call a SEL process, which is a front end loading process. And there's different scales, you know, to that front end loading that is going to be suited to the customer and what their needs are. And what I mean by that is, you know, we're going to sit down with the customer before we get into that FEO process and say, okay, well, what are you guys looking at, you know, to be able to drive to, you know, rough order magnitude? Are you guys needing to be able to get to permitting, you know, to be able to get this in? Because we know, I understand some permitting takes, you know, a year, two years, some are quicker. But what we can do in that front end loading process is to provide them the level of detail they need to be able to move to that next step, you know, understanding the equipment count, understanding the connected horsepower. And we can lead them through that to understand, okay, well, this would, would be the phase one FEL, phase two FEL, then phase three, and then understand what their needs are and we can go from there. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good answer, Alex. And for those who don't know, Alex's history has been within our project management team and he's done numerous FELs and those FELs typically translate into new projects and new bills and he does a, a great job with those. Um, I think the second part of that question was on the ROI and 
you know, the, the canned answer uh, to, to give to any ROI question is it, it is unique to each uh, specific uh, producer. And with the APP system, the various factors can play in. And so as we partner and, and work with the customers within an FEL or just within the, the sales cycle above that, you know, we like to find out what their goals are. We like to find out, you know, what their kind of immediate market opportunities are for the diversified feed, because that plays into the different opportunities with the uh, with the um, with the, with the yields of the Protomax. I'm sorry. Yeah. And and so with that, you know, there's there's greater revenue opportunities with more Protomax versus against it. But I would say just for a window, I would say we typically like to model for the customer kind of a I don't want to call it a worst case, but kind of a, a baseline pricing model. And that's typically in the four and a half to five year range for most of the customers. And then we can flip that and show some of the upside or, you know, kind of where, where customers are today. And that's typically in the three to four year range potentially. And then there's a higher upside one where it can get even better than that up into the two years or less type, type of ROI. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's very impressive for a, an investment in size. So. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we hit on that FEO process, you know, prior to this, too. And, you know, that, that helps us to refine what the actual ROI and give a really good picture to the, the customer as we start going through that FEO process. It's something that we've all bet out and actually look at. And it gives us the opportunity to get into the process data and really understand, okay, what, what can be done here and, and what can we do for the customer and put it on paper and, and actually show them, you know, what, what the return yep. is. Yeah, and those are... I mean, hopefully it came across as kind of obvious, but those are discussions we're having with customers right now. And so if there's more that are interested, we're absolutely happy, happy to, to continue to start and continue those discussions. I think that's good. Um, another question would be, uh, can an APP system integrate in a non-ICM design plan? You may have addressed that in your presentation, but uh, uh, please uh, dive into that a little bit more. And then if you would, um, what specific, you know, challenges arise when it's when you're installing a system in a non-ICM facility, if any? Sure, that's that's another really good question, and that's one I've actually maybe heard some false answers to as I've been out in, in some industry discussions. But yeah, absolutely, the APP system can can fully integrate into any ethanol producer, any ethanol process that is. You know, if you're looking at the the high protein feed products, obviously your your feed stream, your initial feed product needs to be corn. Um, but yeah, whether it be a standard ICM design or, or a Delta T or a Lurgy or some of those others that are out there, the Vogelbush designs, our system will fully integrate and will produce the feed products and do it well. In terms of some things that, that might be required in a different design plant versus the ICM design, um, those, those are kind of site specific and we need to look at them as the opportunities arise. Uh, one of the key things maybe to mention would be within distillation, there is some pressurized beer columns out there or other things that, that might expose uh, you know, a process stream that is housing the sensitive fiber to some, some temperatures or pressures we maybe want to think were ideal. So we'd maybe look at some modifications there. And then the other one would be around the, the dryer systems. You know, we'd, we'd want to make sure that the, the dryer system that's going to be handling the highest value feed would be capable of doing that. So that could require some modifications or potentially the addition of an ICM dryer system. Uh, those are two that are I guess top of my mind right now, Alex. I don't know if there's any others that are coming to your mind. No, I, th I think you got it. Um, and I, I don't like to keep on going back to it, but a lot of that stuff is added out as we go through that FEO process as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I mean, the approach we're taking is definitely doable. Absolutely. And it's fun to to see our customers' eyes, you know, kind of open to that possibility as they as they have us walk through the process flow diagram or as they come and and tour the system here at Element. Very exciting stuff. Great, and uh, I think we addressed this in previous webinars, but but just to do it again, uh, if producers are interested in uh, coming out to Element, uh, you can accommodate that. Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, you know a pretty simple process we go through to to <laughs> to make sure they're they've got the release form signed and they're going to be safe as they go through the system, and we do ask for a couple weeks to just help schedule it. But yeah, we've. We've done uh, quite a few tours here in the last year, year and a half, and we're happy to continue doing those. We are excited to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right it's, on. A, it's a very fun experience. We, Tom, we, we like to show off our processes, and so absolutely. And also just, yeah, Great. I want to mention the folks out at Element, and obviously our partner, the Andersons, the, the co-owners of the system back there, they're, they're great to work with, too. Oh, yeah. We try good, to make that as easy as possible. Good value partners. 
Great. Let me uh, dive into some, some of these questions might get a little specific, but uh, you talked about the ICM rotary drum dryer. You called it the gold standard. It, it is almost an iconic piece of equipment, I would say, in the ethanol industry. Um, they've been around a long time, very reliable. Um, and you, I think you mentioned over 400 of them uh, in, in use or, or have been produced. Um, have those rotary drum dryers uh, evolved over the years? And we talk about temperature control and airflow control, um, just the, the amount of controls that they do have. And that now with, with this system, the need for that kind of fine tuning to be able to more gently dry the product. Um, have there, was there any upgrades that have been needed uh, to the dryer systems to, to attain that? And, uh, and another part of that question maybe would be, um, are the rotary drum dryers that ICM has manufactured out in the field, are they, do they vary quite a bit? The ones that kind of earlier models versus ones that are just a few years old? Yeah, that's a, a multi-part question, a good <laughs> one. Um, so it, it's kind of a, a yes and no question. So it, it's a, a yes in terms of some, some things have been modified. Uh, just over time, new pieces of, of instrumentation, you know, we, we do have a, a relatively new burner design now, but, and, and, and in fact, as you, as you tour Element and you look at that dryer design, we've got a new location for the induced draft ID fan. So there, there's some kind of relatively simple or, I don't want to call them simple, there are some changes that have been made, but in terms of just the overall operation of the system itself, um, it's, it's still the same. It's still a yeah. drum that's turning at 4 RPM. It's still a heat source in front of it that's separated by the air heater and the plenum. It's still all a, 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 a induced draft, so a system that's, that's in negative pressure pulling the, the products through the dryer. Um, and we still have the same capabilities with recycle of both feed and air. So uh, yeah, I think at the base, the operations are still the same, but you, you talked about it there. You know, we used to have the vertical burners. We went to the horizontal burners several, several years ago. Yeah, and there's, there's several and, of those vertical yeah. burners that are yeah, still out there and operating are. great yeah, today. I had my eyes on one of those not too long ago, actually, so it's still operating great today. But um, really what we looked at is just like any of our other, you know, pieces of equipment or technologies we have is any way we can start, you know, helping and tuning that, you know, we do that, and that's that's like the you know the fan change as well, and how we're situating that. It just makes things more you know user friendly. It, it makes it more you know cost effective, and, and, and items like that. But base operations of the dryer are pretty much you know standard. Yeah, and our our capability to do the engineering to to, to calculate out the capacity of those dryer systems. You know, if we're going to put the high protein through through one set of dryers or one dryer, and we're going to put the standard distiller grains or sole brand through another. That's something we have full capability to do to, to size those out and, again, give the customer that best picture of how they can most efficiently best dry the products and produce those end feed products that they're wanting. I really think the biggest change, Tom, you know, is not in the dryers themselves, but, you know, the hydraulic load that we have moved away from going to the dryers through these different processes and technologies and specialty equipment. Yeah, that's a really good that, point. That is probably the biggest change. So again, that's, that's again speaking to the, the greater dewatering that we're able to do within the centrifuge to get a wet cake that's again flowing at 40% plus solids and then the, that fiber stream coming off the press at 40, 45-46% solids, that going to the dryer, those, those things combined give us a lot of capacity and, and capability within the dryer system. The big hitter is that syrup, 50% plus solids. That one as well, yeah. Absolutely. So good, good question. Um, I've got a question here about the different components of the APP system. You've got SMT, FST, FOT, and TS4. Uh, those four things comprising the APP system. You probably get this question a lot, but if you offer those those technologies a la carte, and I think you do, um, um, is the end result um, not then, if, if, if not all together, the, the APP system can it is it not called the APP system if you're if you're um, not fully integrating all of those four technologies in the way you're envisioning you in the way you're doing it I should say uh, that's yeah that's kind of a, a terminology question um, <laughs> so I mean what the way we talk about it is the, a, the you know the APP process is the suite of those four core technologies 
Yeah, and, and the APP system is the system that's capable of producing a 50% high protein feed product like mm -hmm. we're doing here at Element. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the combination of the four technologies within it just kind of is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, APP is just a kind of a simpler way for us to call it that and kind of kid to ourselves that, you know, you want 50% protein? We've got an app for that. Um, <laughs> well, let me so, ask you a better question. In, in, what, in what ways uh, does the system uh, can it can it adapt for the size of a, of the plants in terms of adapting scaling this for both large and small facilities? Okay, yeah, no, that's a that's a good question. That's one we're actually hoping to do. Uh, you know, I'm going to plug plug EPM here. That's we're hoping to do an FEW uh, <laughs> panel discussion on that. Um, but yeah, no, it's really each each component is scalable. So each one of those four key technologies and the way they come together, that's part of the FEL process is identifying, you know, kind of the, the minimum amount of equipment needed to get to the end goal and the end result. And again, fully integrating like we do allows us to do, you know, to produce the 50% feed product with the, the most efficient approach possible. And Alex, I don't know if there's something you want to add. You've done, you know, over a dozen FELs now at this time. I mean, with different customers with different end goals i mean they all kind of they, they all play together and so plant design plant size it, it's all part of the just the factor and some some of them even you know it's a plant that's running 65 right now but they've got a permit up to 75 and they want mm -hmm. the system sized accordingly for when they can hopefully or, get or even you know leaving space for the equipment to to be added you know that, that's always an option too we've had some customers exercise that option as a part of the feo process is hey you know we have the goal of going from, you know, our, our base rate right now up 10 million gallons per year, can you leave us the space, you know, to be able to put in, yep. you know, other units? And so it is definitely scalable. It, it's something that we have in mind as we're going into any ethanol plant at any rate is that, you know, people want to keep on pushing their plants. And so our unit, we're unit based. And just like we talked at the rotor, rotary press, you know, it's a modular design. We can add other channels on as they start moving up it's easily done within the APP process. You know, we can add more units, we can make the space for the units, we can plan for the future, and we can plan for the now. I'm gonna jump back into, uh, kind of back into the weeds here, a uh, very specific question, but the the FOT decanter scroll that has been customized, changed, um, now has that sort of, that the centerpiece with the bars. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, what is achieved by that new design? Uh, I guess I know what we, you talked about what was achieved, but but specifically by moving to that that centerpiece with the bars, uh, what how, how has that changed the game for that centrifuge for that decanter? I mean, yeah. So just just at a high level, to, to recap what we have already discussed is we're looking at you know a higher throughput, a higher cake solids, and a, and a lower centrate solids as well, and. So just kind of a high level, you know, we can dig into this further if people want to reach out to us. But at a high level, we're just we're allowing that liquid level to go clear up into the scroll, providing a volume, more volume within the rotating bowl. Yeah, so within the, the centrifuge world, they call it a deeper pond depth. So that allows greater pressure yeah. for the, the more dense solids to be focused towards the outside yeah. of the bowl. Yeah, so, I mean, more warping volume equals more time and ability to raise centrate further from the cake. That's basically what you said right yep. there you know, in layman's terms. And then, you know, the higher cake solids, we have made modifications as a part of this FOT exclusive scroll um, that provide more, uh, that provide a higher cake uh, or enables us to get a drier cake. And, you know, th there's some things that we can't necessarily dive into, you know, right now, but uh, we can take a higher look if uh, people want to reach out to us, you know, and, and discuss that. Yeah, and again, yeah, so Chuck Gallup and kind of our innovation team, as they've worked with Flatwig, if you sit in on one of those conversations, it's, very, very interesting. It's, it's way over my head, but the, there's some smart people that have come up with this stuff, and it's it's exciting to see. Great. Um, we'll probably uh, wrap up here with a couple final questions. I know we're going to get into uh, the low carbon aspect of this in the next webinar, but maybe a precursor to that. I wanted to ask you a few questions about how uh, the system can bring down uh, the carbon intensity of an ethanol plant. Um, now, do we look at this as a, a platform that can, you know, that that comes with a certain CI reduction, or am I taking that too far by assuming that 
there's an estimated CI reduction with with installing the APP system. Yeah, no, so we have capability to get on those kind of one-on-one -on -one discussions with the customers to, to model what their potential is for CI reduction. And again, it, mm -hmm. it's driven a lot by where they're at today and what their goals are. So we do have capability to, to kind of give a, a CI reduction picture with the system. So yeah, we, we can do that. But in terms of just a, a blanket statement, there's probably too many variables involved to, to just say we're going to reduce it two to four points or, you know, something like that. It's, it's difficult to say just on the onset. Uh, but as we get into the site-specific discussions, we absolutely can do that, yes. Yeah. The FST uh, Next Gen Press, very impressive piece of equipment and and uh, very exciting to talk about and look at. Um, obviously, one of the key areas where you're where you're achieving, uh, you know, lower energy and ultimately uh, bring down that CI. Um, would you say that is the the most uh, important aspect of the system in terms of of uh, lowering energy use? I think the, the three key areas that we hit on, they, they all bring, you know, a level of lowering energy. That, that's definitely one of them. But as we talked about, you know, we talked about the syrup solids, we talked about the decanter cake solids, and we talked about the fiber solids driving all of those. And those in combination are, are going to drive, you know, for that, that efficiency that you're talking about. Tom. And the, the lower viscosity firm feed. Mm -hmm. um, and, the yeah, the, the bottlenecks were able to kind of reduce within distillation, within evaporation. Um, so the rotary press, I, I don't want to downplay it, uh, but I, I wouldn't call it the most important, but I call it, you know, one of the significant and important pieces that the APP brings with it. Absolutely is. Terrific. Well, guys, um, anything else you want to add before we wrap it up for the day? No, just again, thanks to uh, to BBI um, and Ethanol Producer Magazine for for hosting the webinar series. Thanks to everyone who tuned in to to listen. Again, highly recommend if you haven't heard the previous webinars to to go ahead and and catch those recordings online there with BBI. And of course, be on the lookout for for that next webinar that's going to be coming. Chuck Chuck Gallup talking about CI score reduction. Excellent. Well, thanks. Thanks again. And I want to thank ICM for sponsoring today's webinar and Adam and Alex for an excellent presentation. Uh, we do have, uh, as, as they mentioned, that fourth webinar coming up sometime this spring. Stay tuned for that, as well as BBI International events. We've got our International Biomass Conference and Expo coming up in March. And this summer in June, we've got the International Fuel Ethanol Workshop that is co-located with the Carbon Capture and Storage Summit and the Biodiesel and Renewable Diesel Summit all taking place the same week together in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, and then the National Carbon Capture Conference and Expo, a new event on carbon capture taking pl place uh, in the fall in Des Moines. So uh, keep an eye out for all of the, those events and we hope to see you at the Biomass Conference in Florida and of course the FEW in Minneapolis. And with that, I just wanna thank ICM once again and thank all of our participants today for joining us. Have a good afternoon.